To start with on it, on the engine, every day you should check the oil. Dipstick is right here. Make sure that it is within the operating range. Um, hydraulic oil is on this meter right here. This should always be approximately an inch from the bottom. And then you want to check it for leaks daily. So you open up the inspection cover, check your hoses, check your filter, make sure you don't have any leaks. Nothing's coming out by your um, by the valves or the cylinders. The fuel gauge is on the tank right here. And if you need to maintain the battery, the battery is underneath this connector, which is is basically a sling type uh, marine connector it's directly under here. Make sure your battery cables are tight. They don't vibrate loose. On the cutter side, check that your cutters are sharp. You should have a nice crisp edge on them. Your wear plates on the inside should have a sharp edge or shouldn't be eroding into the curvature of the mandrel. Mandrel should spin freely and your wheels should spin freely. Once a shift, the Zerk fittings on the wheels should be greased and the Zerk fittings on the bearings should be greased once a month. No more than once a month. It will blow the seals out if you grease them too often. Um, once again, check everything for leaks over here and check and make sure your bolts are tight. Now, before starting the, the machine, after you've gone through your checks, the make sure that the sump valve for the hydraulics is all the way open. And then on the engine, we pull out our choke control all the way out. Make sure the throttle is all the way down to idle and proceed to start it. And as soon as it starts, put to half half choke and then when it idles for about 10 seconds, go to turn the choke completely off and let it idle for about a minute. I let it idle to warm up. While this is going on, it's a good time to check your oil filter. Right now the gauge is in the green. When the service filter starts getting up into the yellow and red, it's time to change the filter. On this side of the machine, I have to come around over here. This is your hydraulic pressure. This should be at 2,000 PSI. That's the normal operating pressure. If it's not, the pump needs to be adjusted, and if it won't maintain it, you may have to replace the pump. Now, the basic operation of the machine, I'll leave it in idle. Everything is controlled by the two enable buttons. If I hit my joystick, nothing will move until one of these two is pressed. The one on the left turns the knives on, and the one on the right is just for a basic enable without the knives on. So in order to make this thing function, you have to hit one of these two enable switches, and you can lift the mandrel up. Now that it's lifted, it'll allow you to move the mandrels either left or right to do the cutting. If you come across a tire that, that has an interrupted cut and you need to enter into that cut, you can line the tire up and enable it without the blades turning to pierce into the tire, then start the blades. It will not let you move the mandrel down unless the, the head is completely disengaged, which will happen automatically if you're not touching the joystick. And you bring it back down. The throttle control is right here. You either have idle or high. 
if I hit this up, that's the normal operating. Now to load a tire, drape the tire directly over the mandrel. Now you can bring the tire up and then push it down onto the mandrel completely. Gauge the dives, bring the machine up, bring it into the cut. Once one side's done, bring it into the other side. So that's done, let it go, drop the mandrel. Separate your two pieces. Now to touch up the knives, because they get dull, this edge will eventually roll over. You can usually resharpen these knives probably close to 50 times, as long as you don't take too much material off of this edge. So in order to do that with the engine running, use an angle grinder. And if you're not comfortable holding the grinder with one hand, have somebody else hit the green button. But you push down the green button and the mandrel start to spin. While they're spinning, you hold your knife, hold your blade at the same angle as the knife face and grind a small amount of material off the top and the bottom to resharpen this edge. Like so, gives you a nice clean edge. That needs to be done whenever the knives get so dull that you're having issues cutting through the tires. It helps, it's helpful to have a cordless grinder on hand if you're, if you're cutting tires on a regular basis. Now if the knives need to be replaced, the two main wear parts are the rotary knives you have the friction discs, which the ones in the top are slightly bigger than the ones in the bottom. And then we have our wear plates that are on the inside of our mandrel. Now to get the knives off, you need an inch and an eighth socket, preferably on an impact. Makes it, impact makes it a lot easier. And you just remove the center bolt. and the washer, bigger washer, and then your friction disc will fall, come out like so. And you hang on to the top friction disc and then your knife comes out. And these discs come out as well, they just slide off of here. And a reassembly is the exact opposite. Just slide on your knife, put on the lower friction discs, the washers, and reattach. You torque it to about 120 foot-pounds, the typically a, an impact set on medium is just fine for it. The wear plates come off in a similar manner using a 5 8 hex uh, or allen socket. Remove the center bolt. Then the top just comes off and there is a ring, the spacer ring, and these are your wear plates. There's one in the top and one on the bottom. Now you can take these, when one edge gets wore, you can spin them around to the other side and get another use out of them until they're completely rounded off. As long as you want to try to keep kind of a sharper edge on here, 
the tire cuts cleaner um, when that's a sharper edge. So when these get too worn, you have to replace them. To put them back on, just make sure that the pins are in here. Make sure you don't have any debris on the top of this because it butts up against it. Line up your pins. Like so. And just reinsert the center nut. Same thing, I'm just going to use an impact. Put it back on and that's it. One other adjustment that has to be made periodically is the position or the height of this ram. As these bearings wear out, the ram will start to sag. And what happens then is your knives do not line up with the mandrel. So to adjust this, you have to start it up and bring the mandrel all the way up. Once the mandrel's all the way up, hit enable and bring the, the knife close to the position of the mandrel. You want the knife to be approximately centered with the groove in the mandrel. It could be either centered or slightly towards the bottom. You don't want it rubbing on the top because then the, the wire will pull out and stay hanging out of your sidewall. If it's towards the bottom, it stays more in the, in the tread. Now once you have this in position, if, it is out of, if it's out of position, we have two set screws, one here and one here. And these are your adjustment. To adjust these, you loosen up the, bolt, the bolts in front of the set screws, then you bump the set screws up against them, then you loosen up these two. Now it's, it's rest, you'll be resting on them. As you move these with a driver, it will tilt the head down or tilt the head up. The one in the front will bring it down, the one in back will bring it up. Get it to the height that you want, and once it's there, you lock down the two outer bolts first, completely to about 75 foot-pounds. Back off the set screws again, and then tighten up these two bolts. If you find that one side, if you find that it is tilted more to one side than the other, then you, do, you have to do the same operation, but from the top. You have to remove this cover, and then below it, there's the same set of set screws. But they go out left and right. So that adjusts the tilt of the head. This should only have to be done maybe once a month, or possibly even every other couple months. It all depends on how cold it is, and if the, if, if the bearings are wearing. If you're noticing an excessive amount of wear, you may want to check your bearings and make sure that there's grease in them or that the bearings haven't blown out. And that's pretty much it for basic maintenance, uh, besides the trailer functions, making sure your air pressure is acceptable for towing, and that all of your bearing caps are still in place, that you don't lose them while you're driving down the highway. I, don't know, I think that's about it.